the land of Oz. 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 Things began to change when Frank arranged to have lunch with a writer friend he'd met while acting in Chicago years before. Opie, do you think I could ask your opinion on something? Fire away. Well, I've been working for a number of years on this children's book. Uh-huh. I thought about trying to get it published, but up until a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't really sure if I had a story. Now you do. Now I do, and I've done enough work on it that I'd really like someone to see it. Children's book, huh? Right. Do you think maybe your publisher would take a look at it for me? Nope, never does that kind of book. But there is someone who eats lunch here every day who might be interested. Maud, where are you? Up here. Maud? I'm in the bedroom. I've got something to tell you. What is it? Something wonderful. Maud? What? I met a man named Chauncey Williams at the press club. He's the junior partner in a publishing firm. There's a chance... I might do a book for them. The Oz book? Well, no, he he was talking about them wanting to do a, a book about Mother Goose, and I, I suggested the idea of converting the rhymes into stories, and they liked the idea. Oh, that's wonderful, Frank. I'm so pleased for you. Maybe something will finally come of my storytelling. Of course it will, of course it will. Now all I have to do is find the time to write it. Frank did find the time to write it. And Mother Goose in Prose was published in October 1897. Mom, it's here! The book was an artistic success, but not financial. Frank had to go on the road again. He seemed so worn out physically. I was worried about him hauling around those heavy trunks. Good, you're still open. Oh! Mr. Taylor, how are you? I'm getting to wonder if I'd see you this month. Oh, well, I got a bit behind today. Sorry. How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you very much. You're a little pale to me. Oh, no, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Now, I know your customers are really going to like this new line of imported China. It's a huge success. In New York and Chicago, and it seems to be catching on in, in uh, Boston, Philadelphia. I'm sorry. Mom? I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Do you need some help? Frank was told by our doctor that his heart condition was serious enough to find a more sedentary occupation. I don't know how much money it'll bring in, but at least it'll be something. And since I can't go back out on the road again... You're going to try another book? Please, Mother Gage. Maud, this man, William Denslow, is a very successful artist. If going back on the road is no longer feasible, might I suggest you reconsider that job in my cousin's store? Please, I prefer trying this, if you don't mind. Another book, when the first one was obviously a failure. It wasn't a failure, Mother. Oh? I was under the impression it hadn't really made that much money. It was received well by the critics. If it hadn't been, this artist wouldn't be offering to work with Frank on another book. Father Goose. More fairy tales. Something wrong with that? Frank, people need reality, not fantasy. That's the trouble with this world today. Nobody cares to face reality. Well, I have a feeling it just might work. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go get ready for Denslow. Good luck. Mother, will you leave him be? I am trying to help. Well, you're not helping. You're upsetting him. <sighs> to my dying day, I will never understand why you married that man. I marry him for love, Mother. Maybe that's what you can't understand. Oh, thank you. Did you have a 
happened to mention the Oz book to this artist, Frank? I didn't think it was a good idea, Maude, since Father Goose was Denslow's suggestion. If the opportunity comes up, I think you should mention it to him. I will if I get a chance. Come in. Ah, Frank, good to see you. Mr. Denslow, I'd like you to meet my wife, Maud. Hello. Long Denslow. last. William my Denslow, may I take your hat? Thank you. Thank We're you. going to be setting up in the next room, if you don't mind. Let's go to work. Very well. <sighs> Running out of steam? I'm afraid so. Yeah, well, let's take a breather then. Mr. Denslow? Uh, William, please. William. There's another book I have in mind. It's a story I've been working on for a number of years. I, I've, I, I've told parts of it to some children who genuinely seem to enjoy it. Does it have a title? Well, I'm, I'm calling it now The Emerald City. What's it about? There's a little girl named Dorothy who lives in Kansas. And? And one day, in the middle of this Kansas prairie, there's this huge cyclone. And before she knows it, picks up her house. She's in Is that it? Very close. Maybe I think a little rounder. Thank you. That's it. That's Dorothy. Father Goose, his book, was published in September 1899. To everyone's delight, and I must confess astonishment, it was so quickly sold out that a second edition of 10,000 copies was printed on October 16th. By Christmas, more than 75,000 copies had been printed, bringing in enough money so that at long last, Frank could begin working seriously on the Emerald City. neck and kissed him, patting his big head tenderly. <laughs> then she kissed the tin woodsman who was weeping in a way most dangerous to his joints. But she hugged the soft stuffed body of the scarecrow in her arms instead of kissing his painted face and found she was crying herself at this sorrowful parting from her loving comrades. This is going to work, William. It's going to work just fine. Well, let's just hope it sells. Sells? They're going to love this. I uh, don't know what to say, except I am not inclined to invest any money in publishing this. You can't be serious. I can only say that Father Goose, his book, was exactly what we were looking for, what the public was looking for. Shorter stories, more family appeal, not just some children's story. Now, if you could give us another book like that. Thank him again. <laughs> Frank. I can't believe this. Calm down. 
Frank, it's not unusual. For me, it is. This book is wonderful. Well, maybe not to the publishing. I'm not giving up on this. Frank didn't give up. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I'm afraid we just can't publish your book. Everywhere they went, it was the same story. for an American fairy tale. It would have been written and published long ago. Papa, would you tell me a story before I go to bed? Not tonight. Why? Not tonight, Harry. Oh, please, Papa. I said not tonight! What's wrong? Papa yelled at me. <laughs> Papa's just a little tired, sweetheart. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Why don't you go get ready for bed and I'll be right there. All right? Mm. What's happening, Frank? Frightening your own child, for God's sake. No, I just... There's a curse on this book. Frank. You know how much I care about your book, believe in it. But I care more about you and the health of this family. You'll we'll never see the light of day. The only children that ever know about this book will be ours and a few of their friends. That's not true. It's a good story. I've heard it and read it over and over again, and it never fails to carry me away. I know you'll find a publisher. And if I don't? You will. I'm tired. I'm sick. I'm 40 years old, and I can't even provide for my own family. I'm a failure, Maude. No, you're not. You're not a failure. Don't ever say that. want the book to live? Fine. Then I'll kill it before they can. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! It's worthless! Stop it! It's everywhere! Stop it! Stop it! Now listen! Listen to me! Listen to me! No matter how bad it's gotten, you have always found a way out. And if you would stop feeling pity for yourself, you'd find a way this time. <laughs> 